everyone. Today we're going to be talking about database normalization. Um, so you've heard me refer to this concept probably multiple times throughout the class, uh, but we haven't actually dug into sort of like what I mean when I'm saying normalization. Like I've sort of alluded to it, um, that it's some way of organizing data in a relational database, but we haven't actually gone into the specifics. So essentially I wanted you to get a certain uh, set of core concepts down before we got to this key point. Um, and so essentially what database normalization is, is a way to organize data um, in a relational database. And so, so here you're going to be following up on the previous homework. Um, um, so we already had a, had a homework or, or a, and a lesson where we've now pushed some data into a database. Um, and now what you'll be doing is you'll taking sort of a, a slightly messy set of flat data and you'll be rearranging it into this sort of normal form so it's nice and queryable in a database and moving it over to a database, um, the one that you set up. So that being said, let's sort of like jump right in, right? So again, what is normalization? Um, I've referred to it a lot, but again, haven't directly explained. But essentially, it just comes down to it. It's a way to organize data in a relational database. And so, so the key thing here is that it, it follows a set of rules, and these rules have goals. And so one of the goals is, is that it increases the flexibility. So, so the, the ease of uh, being able to expand the information contained or change in information contained, um, reducing redundancy, right? So reducing redundancy is an important thing when you're dealing with really big data. Um, you know, in our situation, lots of times we're not dealing with massive data, or more I'm constraining the size of it just to make it accessible for this course without running up a bunch of AWS fees. Uh, but in reality, um, you, you're really gonna wanna say reduce this redundancy because that's all just extra information you have to store, which increases costs and query times and all these things. Um, and then furthermore, it's a way to, uh, uh, make consistent format and dependency as well, right? And so this is an important thing um, to where then this way it is a reliable way that you can sort of interact with this um, in a consistent way across the different tables, um, you know, which is important for, for, for anyone who's going to be able to access or going to be accessing these data. Um, and so, so the rules here make up a set of series of normal forms, and there's three of the main normal forms that we'll focus on. Uh, one thing I kind of want to stress is, again, you can take multiple classes on database design, and that's not the point of this class. And so I'm sort of giving a very light version of these normal forms, um, and I'm expecting sort of a simple set of normalization that you're going to be able to perform. Um, obviously, these are skills that you're going to need to grow or, or that, that we'll have to grow and you'll have to follow up on. Uh, this is meant to be a primer to get you to sort of be able to create like a basic normalized database. Um, from, from a, a flat file set of data. Okay, so let's just kind of look at what these normal forms are and then we'll get into it with our mocks at a table and kind of talking through them. So the first normal form is this idea of repeating groups within tables. Um, so, you know, if you have uh, columns that are that are repeating but kind of contain the same information, um, essentially what you should do is you should be breaking these out into a separate table uh, versus having them all contained within. Um, also that this notion of each set of related data should have a primary key. And so this is your way to sort of connect these data points to one another, uh, which is obviously important. This whole point of a relational database. The second normal form is that separate tables for values that apply to multiple records. Um, and so, for example, if you have, you know, a customer address, um, like a mailing address, so you can imagine that that could apply to multiple records, right? So, so that address might be in multiple transactions, but it also could also apply with multiple tables too. Um, and so it's rather than having those repeated every single time, you should break that out into its own table where you just have their address in one place and then a foreign key that can connect it over to it. And then third, remove fields that don't rely on the key. And so this is just, again, to remove just extra information and have it in their own table um, where it needs to be or just it might not be needed at all. Um, so let's sort of look at this. So, so you can imagine a set of sample data like this of our Spotify data to where we have sort of this top track info table um, to where it's, you know, how many streams each artist has and song ID and artist ID and genres and all that sort of stuff. And so uh, data in this format, in this, in this square format, is obviously good for analysis, right? Like if you were saying wanted to predict the number of strings, streams based on genres and um, the artist name and these other factors, um, you, you can imagine wanting to use data in this format. Um, and so this is obviously also a common format for CSV or Excel files for, for that semi-structured style data that you might be bringing in quite commonly. Uh, but there's obviously lots of extra info um, and a lot of redundant info. And, and so the problem here is it's, it's very difficult to sort of update and change. Like if you want to sort of add a genre two for saying Frank Sinatra or create a third genre column or something like that, like this is pretty problematic in that you're going to have to update just these single cells in this really big database or really big file um, and it's just overall awkward um, and, and space inefficient and, and all these issues. And so we want to then take this data and sort of normalize it into a more flexible, um, reliable format. So 
uh, kind of to jump into these normal forms, we have the first normal form here. And so the issue here is repeating groups. Um, and so in this case, you know, we have genre one and genre two. And so we have multiple fields here, genre one and genre two, also columns. Um, and it contains the same data, right? It's the same information. It's just the genres. And so, so this is problematic because let's say if you wanted to add in a third genre, you would need to go and add a whole new field slash column um, for the whole database, which is obviously like really inefficient if only a few of those observations have a third classified genre. Um, and you also have this problem to where you have these, you know, the, the blanks in here for genre two for Frank Sinatra, um, which might not be a huge deal, but it's just sort of you have this open space that might not be totally necessary. And so instead, what a better way to format is that you want all the um, columns with the same information just as a single column. You want to make this in a tidier format. And so really it should look something more like this, right? To where you have just a genre column. Uh, but the problem here is now we have still a lot of repeating rows um, because we had to duplicate rows just to inc um, include all the genres in um, the single column. And so this is sort of like a step in the right direction of normalization, but really what you should be doing is you should break this out here, right? So you should take these repeated groups and break it out into its own table. So now we have artist genre over here, and then we have um, instead just their artist ID and then the genre that it applies to. And so this way, if you ever want to bring in the genres associated with an artist, you can just look at this artist genre table versus top track info. Because then what it allows you to do, if you delete that column, you can reduce the redundancy in all the rows. Um, because you, there's no longer anything unique about those rows if you took the genre out. And so you can see that just by separating this out like this, we dramatically reduce the information, or well, we didn't want to reduce information, but the, the storage base associated with this by just um, breaking this out into its own table. And similarly now, let's say that you want to add in another genre for, for that last artist, Y88420. Um, all you have to do is just go ahead and put in that single row insert versus adding in a whole third column for the top track info table. Um, now is a good chance to talk about keys. So foreign keys are a way to relate data to one another that sort of is not necessarily present in this main table. So in top track info is sort of this main table we're focusing on. And so um, we have our artist ID over here. Um, and then we have our artist ID and the foreign key over here in our genre. And so it's a way that we could go and bring these data back in, right? So you relate these data with a foreign key. Um, and a foreign key you can have duplication in, right? So it doesn't just need to be unique. And so this artist genre, we should still go and make a primary key to where we could then uniquely identify um, rows. Uh, but in this case, we're gonna leave it just like this so we can sort of relate it over there um, without a problem. The other thing I want to point out is that there's still a primary key in this top track info table. So this is song ID. So this is this uniquely identifiable key. Um, so you can have duplication of this, and which makes sense, right? Every song is unique, um, and so each one should have its own unique ID. Um, and so that's sort of like the core of this, but the foreign key then allows us to bring in other information that's stored elsewhere um, and keep data um, in a sparser format like this. Okay, now let's look at that second normal form. So we have redundant info, right? So for example, artist name isn't at all dependent necessarily on the song information itself. Um, and furthermore, we already have artist ID sitting here, right? So, so this is a foreign key, but it's also an identifying object. And so instead of actually having this information here, we could just pop it out and make another artist info table. So for one, we reduced a lot of string storage based on that top track info because we're having to duplicate these long strings of information every single time. And so really Spotify is including 10 tracks for each and every one of these songs. Um, and so you can imagine that for each and every artist, they have the top 10 tracks. And so that's 10 times that Dance of the Dead is duplicated and 10 times that Frank Sinatra and Odessa and so on and so forth. And so by cutting those down just a single one for each artist's name, uh, you're going to reduce a lot of information um, and a lot of storage space. And again, if you ever want to link it, you can just query it back. Um, and then similarly, removing data. Um, so this is a sort of a simple example, this last normal form that's not reliant on the key, right? So again, like the number of followers isn't reliant on song information. And so really it shouldn't be in there at all. 
Um, it also is redundant, so it kind of applies to that second normal form as well. And so you could do a couple things, right? So you could imagine making your own table with it, right? So you have like a, like a social table that is, is for each artist ID, you have their social information about how many followers uh, and maybe where those followers are at and so on and so forth. Or you could add it to the artist info table too, right? So it's still a simpler place to update it. So we're just gonna be updating a single cell within that small table versus every top track info where it has number of followers. Um, so one of the things that underlies this is sort of this notion of a schema, right? So, so, so in this last slide, we sort of were kind of making a schema to where we had our top track info, we had our primary key of song ID, and then we had this foreign key of artist ID that then was allowed us to relate these other tables back to it. Um, and so it's defining the relationships among these tables. And so it kind of seemed like we were just doing this off the cuff, um, but rea in the reality, what you would do is you would want to sort of think a little bit about how you're going to arrange these before you go and just start hacking up data and pushing these different tables. And so remember for AWS data, where we had the sales information and dates and events and all that, um, essentially these are related in the schema, and that's a diagram of a schema down there on the bottom right. So you know how the different keys connect to one another and then allow you to bring data together. And so, so how I think you should do this, especially with your homework is, is sort of look at the head of the raw data, right? So take in your raw data and think like what information's all in here. Let's look at five rows, 10 rows, something like that. And then I kind of like to list out all the columns and then hand draw out the tables that I want to normalize, right? Um, or a list of columns. So, so basically take a piece of paper or, you know, a little Excel spreadsheet or whatever you want to do um, in some way that you can sort of say, hey, I want to make this table and this is the column name and this is the information that's going to contain and this is going to be the key. And just kind of step back and then think with information in each one of those tables, does it contain information that allows me, you know, like with the keys here and then there's a foreign key over here, can I bring information together as needed? Um, so again, it, it can obviously get somewhat complicated like the sales data, but we don't have to get that complicated for this homework, luckily. Um, so just kind of look again here so you can kind of see this diagram. So um, there's my, uh, the SQL head of the, the sales data frame. So the one that's in the center of the diagram in the top. And then I also on the, the bottom right, I have the, the head of the event data. And so what you can see in sales is that you have the primary key, which is um, sales ID. And so that's sitting there and centered. Um, and then we have all these other IDs, list ID, seller ID, buyer ID, event ID, date ID. Um, and so these are one, two, three, four, uh, five different foreign keys associated uh, with sales. And so for example, if you go and look over there an event ID, well, then event ID in this case happens to be the primary key uh, because each event is unique. And so it can, there's multiple sales. So, you know, it's why you might see redundancy in event ID in the left side. Like if you look at rows uh, one and two in our sales table, you can see that the event ID is duplicated. There's uh, eight, four or eight, six, four, seven shows up twice in a row, right? Because each sale uh, might be unique, but there can be multiple events associated with each ID. And so that's why the event information is split off into its own table, because you don't want to then duplicate that event information for each and every single sale. Uh, but so you can kind of see how these are related, but then also event ID has venue ID and category ID and date ID. And so, so the, these interdependencies can obviously get pretty complicated. Um, but once you sort of get a good handle on the data and start to really understand and think about it, it comes a little bit easier to parse it apart. But it's kind of why it's important to sit back and look at like, well, what are all the data that are contained here in the head of my data and the relationships and really kind of think about how you can separate these. Um, and so that's just sort of, you know, a brief overview of sort of how to do this in, in, in terms of a very simple way is start simple and on paper versus start trying to make functions to push data all over the place, for example. So doing this in Python, um, you know, I think operationally it's not that hard, right? Like once you make this schema, then it's pretty easy. So, so the, the process is essentially just split your data. Like once you define your tables and what's in each, you're going to split them all into different data frames uh, by selecting out the columns you need, right? So that allows you to get just the rows you need. Um, then you can reduce rows if needed. So for example, you might split out all the event ID information into one um, to where if each and every um, sale was a row and all the event information was tied to each one, well, you might then go and make just the event information table, but you're gonna have a lot of duplication. So the drop duplicates is really helpful here is all I'm saying, is you might go and make this and then you need to reduce it down so you only have just unique rows. 
Um, you need to think you need to generate keys before or after the split, right? Um, so, so this can be done in a number of ways and sometimes simple, sometimes not. Like you might be able to just make a sequence of values to make your key or you might need something more uniquely identifying if it's associated with say time data. And then finally, after all that, then connect to the, the database and upload. And so this we've already done, but you know, you're going to have to do it with multiple tables this time with different number of fields and different number of data types. Um, so here I'm just sort of talking a little bit about sort of if you have this top track info, you know, and sort of at this midpoint where we created this artist, artist genres table, and then we still have our original top track info. Well, to create that artist genres table, you'll take your top track info and you'll select just artist ID in the genre. Then you'll take artist genre and drop the duplicates. Um, and that'll get you over there to that artist genres to where you have that nice small data frame. And then you can actually pop back over to top track info and drop the duplicates from there as well after you've removed a uh, genre with, with drop. Um, and so the functions here are pretty similar. It's just a lot of separating and dropping different things and then maybe generating a key. Um, the one, the last thing I'm going to just take a minute to talk about here is that normalization isn't the only way. Um, so there's lots of different ways that people have proposed to, to um, organize data. And sometimes it depends on sort of what the function of the database is, right? So if you're making a data warehouse with this, this um, explicit focus of um, analytics, you might actually use a different schema that allows um, more simple joins and relations of data. Um, so some of these other schemas are like star and snowflake schema, and they, they center around these ideas of a fact table and a dimension table. Um, so a fact table is sort of these like core measurements of like whatever the business is. So it could be every sale, right? Because so then that sale is, is like considered like a fact, like it's just this real event that happened or a booking of a hotel um, or, or something that was listened to or watched. Um, it tends to be the most highly granular data, right? So like what's the smallest unit of data that's coming in of like an event? And then you have foreign keys in each one of those facts that pop out to your dimension tables. And so these dimension tables are sort of like descriptions of things that you may or may not need. Um, when analyzing your fact table. So let's kind of take a look. So Airbnb uses a star schema uh, for their da data organization for all their, their analytics. And so if in this case, the fact table is right there at the center. And so again, you can, this is why it's called a star is that each one is linked by a single branch to that center core. So, so every time a booking's made, it's what is the unique ID associated with the booking? And then it has all these foreign keys. What's the apartment ID, the owner ID, the customer ID, receipt ID, and then the start and end date of the booking. And so those foreign keys link to then those dimensions tables. And so this is information. Let's say that you want just customer information. You can go over to the customer fact table uh, or the, the customer uh, dimension table and bring it in. Uh, and then similarly, if you want, you know, the apartment info, you can then also pop over there and get the apartment information. So depending on the information that you want at a given time, it's very easy to bring this information in and out of uh, your database for um, analysis um, or like whatever system you're using for analysis. Snowflake schema is like really similar, right? So it's similar to star, but this is basically there's further sort of like um, chunks or it's it's further reduced down uh, to to normalize it even more. So you can see it starts with that fact table there in the center and then it has of sales and then it has a dimension table of time and branch and location item but like even item is is um, split out into another dimension table to where then you have supplier information right so what's that supplier key and then the type and location information is broken down even more right so what's the city key the city, the provenance, the country. And so it's just basically um, even more granular or sort of even more normalized. And so this is obviously helpful, like it, it can potentially keep things smaller, but also you can imagine how it's more complicated, right? Like if you have to start joining multiple, multiple tables together, uh, it could blow up really quick in terms of how big it is and make your queries more complex compared to just something that's slightly somewhat simpler, like a star schema. So just like to wrap up, so, so like normalization is key uh, to making a database stable, maintainable, and efficient. Um, Trade-offs are made in regard to how far you want to normalize, right? So again, this idea of like it could balloon into tons and tons of tables. Um, it might be okay to have some redundancy um, or some duplication. And there's actually a lot of talk about this now, like, like storage space is becoming so cheap. Um, that sort of the, the notion of making things really efficient isn't always the biggest priority, right? Sometimes like just making it easier to query might be well worth it, um, even if it is gonna cost you a little bit more in storage space. 
Um, this idea of standard normalization is not the only way to go because you have these other schema types. Um, oh, and then that last thing should say, this is not um, a relational database design class, right? So again, this is like a really, really big field. Databases have been around for ages at this point, right? So there's lots of theory and concepts and standards that go into place that I just do not have the time to teach you all. Um, and so a lot of this stuff you're gonna have to pick up on your own, right? Like this is meant to be a core primer where we're gonna go and normalize a database. Um, and so it'll be important for you to sort of follow up on this and dig into some of these other methods as well. Um, but with that being said, um, I hope this helps you out um, on your homework. Um, so I will end this here. And as always, please post questions or, or any comments you have to Slack. Thank you.